I'm Bob Baker, your jazz guitar today. Hey, Bob, Mike we're Seal. We're Mike Seal, and we're at the City Winery in uh, in Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, the reason I contact the reason I contacted Mike is because we've been uh, been really interested in well, not only is his playing great, and you'll see that in a second, but we've been really interested in guys that that are rooted in jazz, but can play rock, country, bluegrass, whatever it is that they want to do. And you know multi-genre influenced and that's you brother uh, thanks a lot thanks man <laughs> that is you for sure and uh additionally we'll talk about it in a minute but you you don't play with a pick either that's right which is which is really really cool so your style why don't you rip off a couple of licks for everybody just to okay just to mess around cool um i'll play a little jerry reed thing because i love that stuff. yeah um, sure <laughs> <laughs> that sounds awesome. So let's talk, let's talk about your guitar for just a minute, man. Yeah, sure. It's, it's an Ibanez. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you got double hums on there, it sounds like. I do, yeah, and it's cool. It's got a five-way switch, so you can do kind of a coil tap on two and four. Yeah, were you just were you just playing that, that uh, the chicken picker thing with a single coil going, or was it? I was actually I was just using the um, bridge the whole bridge picker. Yeah, and yeah. on the beginning I was using the neck, and that's those are the two that I use most of the time. On the middle setting, you get more of like a kind of a strat. Yeah, the, the strat out of sound. Bass thing. Yeah, and then you've got two and four, which blend blend all that stuff, and that's the coil tap. So what's what what strings are you using on that? They look like nines. They're they're tens, they're and tens? um, they're uh, this is a um elixir set. Elixir. And, um, I have really oily hands, and especially my right hand, you can see a lot of wear right here because that just the oil eats through the string. So, the coated elixir strings help me. They work for you. Yeah, they last a little bit longer. That's really cool. Playing every night. I'm so. gonna back up with with this. I'm, I, we've got a couple of things going on. I've got my phone in my hand, and I'm gonna show everybody the stage. We're at the city winery. And this is your rig. You got your deluxe reverb. Yeah, that's it. I'm assuming that's a reissue. It is, and it's a funky one too. It's uh, I think it's what they're calling it is the Tone Master series. Yeah. Uh, so you'll notice there's no microphone on it. It's actually uh, normally turned off. And I'll come over with your camera here and show you. Yeah, sure. So when we do the actual show, right, I'm gonna um, I'm gonna come over here. We're actually running a DI line out of the oh, back. Oh, this is the uh, the uh, the simulated one. Exactly, it's solid state. There are no tubes. It doesn't weigh anything. It's really light, and I have a bunch of actual deluxes at home with the tubes yeah. in them. So I love this thing because it's light, and it has a little amp modeler in the back. And yeah. um, I'll turn the speaker back on. I mean, right now the DI is active, but nothing's coming out, right? Yeah. So, but sure. that that DI is working. So when I play tonight, the speaker will actually be off on stage. So no stage volume. But when I flip that back on, it works just like a normal. And I'll, I'll give it a little more volume for a second. Yeah, sure. I mean, it's a really good sound and amp for Man, me, especially uh, for yeah, me that's a, a tubeless. I, yeah, no, it sounds great. So this is the first, yeah, this is the first solid state amp I've ever used on stage before, but I'm very happy with it. You know, I'll tell you what, man, that's pretty good. That's, that's pretty good. So let's, let's talk about your pedal board here. You know, I, I've got a lot of simple stuff, and I um, I finally have a board where I use everything on it. I used to carry around all this junk that I never used, so I finally streamlined it. So I um, oh, can laugh about that. We've sure. got a, a Ernie Ball um, volume pedal, and mm -hmm. this one has that um, synthetic cable in it that won't break all the time, because after right. changing like 90 of those things, you get pretty tired of it. Yeah, so sure. This one has like a braided synthetic cable in it. Mm -hmm. um, I've got a switcher here, which is a new addition. That's just so I can use the acoustic through this tone dexter over here. Mm -hmm. And that's also a new addition. So the acoustic 
runs through that, and I just switch over to Here's the tone that you were talking about. That's your acoustic preamp. That's right, yeah, and it's it, it models a bunch of microphones that you record directly right. into it, so I've got yeah. like 12 mics captured on it. That I, I, I got to through. talk to those guys when they were first developing this concept, and uh, I was doing some consulting work at the time, and uh, they're, they're geniuses, and the system is really, really great. Absolutely. it's been, You'll notice everybody else on stage has got one practically. Yeah. Chris, Christian, Daniel, and John Hyatt are all using... Everybody's using... got tone decks. Well, yeah. everybody's got tone dexters. Yep. They're going to love me for, for that. <laughs> right. And then, so, then you got the tuner. Yep, I got the Polytune. This whammy pedal, a lot of, you know, every guitar player will recognize this. I have it taped off because I kept accidentally switching this knob during the set. <laughs> and I would get these weird, like, harmonic options that it has where right. it'll do a third or a fourth or a fifth, which I really right. like, actually. Yeah. I'm going to pull the tape off because there is something really cool that you can do with that if you go to the, I think it's the fifth right here. Let me see. Yeah, let me see if I can make this happen. All right. Sure. So what is the one you use most of the time? So I keep it on here because for John's tunes, I actually use a little bit of a chorus effect. And mm -hmm. if you have it on set on this shallow chorus, you can get this on. Um, you can just roll it on. Oh, yeah. So it's roll not it too in your face and you know, yeah. you can kind of pick. So there's a lot of like sort of sus chords that I have to play on these in these tunes. Like, you can all use it for certain chord types and for certain parts of the songs. Right, sure. But I also really love this deep chorus that I, it has. I love it that you, you play, play that chord again. I love it that you play a lot of just like chords like... Everybody plays. Right? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Especially for John Hyatt's music, it, yeah. that, that, it calls for that. Um, but if you go to the deep well, setting, those you can sound, get these. Those chords sound good. You know, that's a bit, that oh, I love it all, Joe, man. Joe Pass said, you know, hey, you know, you know, Joe DiOrio said to him, he said, man, it's a D chord. What, what do you, you know, the great Joe Pass play? He said, right. he said, man, it works. It's the right chord. It's the one I'm going to do. Know, <laughs> right. Man, playing. I haven't heard anybody talk about Joe DiOrio in a long time, too. Oh, well, he was another one of my sort of yeah, educational heroes. Yeah, he's, he's, we want to do something about, with him, but anyway. Man, with this uh, deep chorus here, you can get this kind of faux organ sound like... Oh, but you know what? You're, you're denying yourself the pleasure of carrying two Leslies up the stairs. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Actually, for this record, and man, uh, we found out this morning that it got nominated for a Grammy, so we're all really? pretty excited about cool. that. So we got uh, the uh, Americana album of the year category um, wow. up with Jackson Brown and a bunch of other great people. That's great. But for the record, instead of using this pedal, I use the actual Leslie cabinet for one of the tunes to get that sound. Yeah. It's really cool to have the giant rotary switch. They do there. sound great. I mean, there's no doubt about it, but yeah, know, it's fun. Electronically, you can, you can definitely make So do you have an overdrive pedal? I do. Actually, I pretty much leave this on all the time. And this is a, a really great pedal. It's actually my brother-in-law's uh, my brother-in-law designed this, uh -huh. uh, Tyler Bryant. Um, okay. He has a great band, Tyler Bryant and the Shakedown. So this is the TB Drive Shakedown Special. Okay, cool. Uh, and it's a two-stage overdrive. It's just, it replaced the one that I had before, but it sounds a lot better. So you can get some pretty good grit out of it. EQ and kind of cuts that you can do, so you, yeah. can, you can really tune it. And it sounds real. It does. It yeah. sounds real, and you don't have to real. crank the amp up so much. Yeah. Um, so I keep the amp on a clean. Play that lick again. Uh, <laughs> I can't remember what I played. <laughs> uh, I was teasing you. That's cool. That sounds great. But man, for John, his stuff is a little bit more uh, Americana and acoustic. In yeah. fact, everyone else is a, uh, an acoustic player on this gig. I'm the um, I'm the odd man out with the electric. You're the outlier. Yep. So I use it on like just a little bit of drive where I can, if yep. I dig in, I can get it, and if not, you can still get really like yeah. nice clean tones. And I'll use this heavy reverb for a lot of his tunes that you'll hear tonight, where you can get these. <laughs> Or even pedal steel kind of sounds where Jerry and I have these kind of double runs that we do that'll be, uh, be volume fade runs like. Oh, yeah. And you can really simulate a pedal steel. And you're doing is, that with tens. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I, I've gotten used to it. I've been yeah. playing these for so long. It's just a couple yeah, All the telly guys will go, what? <laughs> Man, well, um, with my right hand, I tend to break nines a lot faster and I still yeah. break some of the tens. So. Right. So, and that's pretty much it. I've got the Hall of Fame 
TC Electronic reverb pedal, which I really like. It's got a lot of options in it. You know what? Little... That thing is just wonderful. Yeah, it's awesome. It was, you can get uh, so for many those of you who don't it. know, if you, if you need a reverb pedal, I can't really get it. But yeah. this is TC Electronics Hall of Fame, and they're not expensive, and they've got a lot of great sounds. And yep, they can on... even run stereo out with yep. these. So. And they're on a lot of pedal boards with uh, a lot of other luminaries as well. It's just a That's great. Right. That's right. It's a great pedal, and uh, you don't have to spend. You yeah. can if you want, but right. but it's a great it's a great pedal. And, and that's pretty much it, except I threw a little um, a tiny delay pedal on here just to get a little bit of slap back sometimes. So to get to because a lot of John's parts have these sort of boogie guitar kind yeah. of rhythm rides, so it'd be like um. Yeah, I have to play a lot of like uh, stuff like that on this gig, so that that pedal kind of helps. And when you're doing solos and stuff, it goes. Like, I like that just a little extra that it gives you back. So yeah, you know, and some some people actually will, will take a delay and they'll just they'll put it on just so ever so slightly just to give them a little more feel. And, absolutely, and, and, and absolutely, just, absolutely. Yeah, a little more feel. And uh, Jerry uses a lot of delay too. Jerry Douglas, um, yeah. he'll use a longer delay and instead of reverb, he yeah, actually like favors like that over reverb. Or like mm -hmm. two, two, three hundred. Three yeah, and that gives him like a really that. wide sound when he's playing. So. So this is Jerry's rig. Uh, this is John's right here. Close this to is us. John's. Yeah, this is John Heights. He runs two guitars. That's why he's got the two different tone depths. Uh -huh. Right. And then he, this is his switcher right here and his timer, and that's what he runs. And he's got two PRS yeah, guitars. It's a Layla switcher. Yep. Great stuff. Mm -hmm. Real streamlined. And, and then, then this is Jerry's rig over here. This, this one's Jerry's? Yeah, this is Jerry's. So he's got, he runs a lap steel and a dobro through it, mainly dobro. Yeah. But he's got his delay there, his volume pedal that he uses for everything. Man, you this, know what's really cool? He's, he's, using, he's using the boss delays. The, the yeah, DD. man. And, you know, those and things it makes just, it sound good. Those things, they sound great. They exactly. work. Exactly. And this thing is kind of his proprietary Fishman yeah. uh, Aura. Yep, I, I, awesome. I actually have one of those, and I sent my guitar up and had it custom. Awesome. So it's probably the same guy did it. Yeah. I don't have fish, I don't have his cachet, thing. but uh, the Aura system works great, no doubt about it. Man, they're awesome. And then yeah, yeah. this thing, the Tone Dex, it's kind of like the. Um, it's kind of like the stuff that we're using, but yeah. it's basically a, um, an acoustic modeler that gives him lots of, he gets effects and stuff out of this too. So you yeah. get a chorus and delay and other kind of stuff. Well, like that's that. really, really cool. And that there's is. a nice compressor on here too. So what do we got over here? This is our fiddle player. He's got the most wild board of all of us. So he just <laughs> sent it off and had this all um, like Put made. Put together, yeah. yeah. So it's it's awesome. He's got his power supply embedded under the Tone, yeah. tone Dexter. Um, he, well, this is a ditto loop. Ditto he looper. spent some money on that one. Yeah, and he's got some cool stuff. He gets crazy sounds out of the Pog, too. Yeah. That's probably the most familiar one that people will recognize. Yeah, they're but... very cool, no doubt about it. So that's it. And then um, over here, our bass player also has pretty robust pedal board going on. You know, that's funny. Been... All the acoustic guys have more pedals than I do. Isn't that wild? <laughs> that's absolutely wild. So he's using, oh, he's using a Felix. Wow, that's, that's right, that's, yeah. Grace Felix is, oh, doesn't yeah. get any better it now. Sounds really good. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're wonderful. Yeah, but he's got the same. He's got Hall of Fame reverb. Yeah. And a tuner. Yeah, like, a nice tuner, actually. Go it's, figure. It shows a stroke. <laughs> and uh, the cool thing with that one is if you're playing in a festival out in the sunshine, you, you can, can still see you it. Can see, yeah, well, unlike I'll, mine. I'll, I'll tell you, I understand that problem. Right. Yeah, I, I do. do. Becomes well, important. let's sit back down again. Sure. sure. That was fun. Let's talk about guitar, guitar style. You, you have a jazz background. I do, yeah. You can play all the standards and or no, you know. Yeah, you I'm forgetting a lot of them these days, but I but I learned a lot as a kid, and I, I right. went to jazz school for a little bit. Yeah, um, and mainly learned that stuff from a teacher I had in high school. Right. Mm -hmm. So you have that background, and you you know you have that language. You you've been exposed to that language. You played that language and all of that. And um, and now what what would you call your style? Oh man, you know. Uh, confused, maybe. I, don't know. I like that. <laughs> uh, sometimes I feel like kind of a um, a guitar player with no no home because I I really love a lot of jazz music and a lot of um country and uh, chicken picking stuff and classical guitar and right. Brazilian guitar. Uh, so somewhere in between all that stuff. Well, for the for the people that they can't really see me, but for the people, you you, you really need if you haven't checked Mike out, you really need to check out Mike. Uh, all the YouTube stuff he's got because you'll understand that he's proficient in all these different genres and in his own thing he kind of pulls it all together and makes something new happen and at Jazz Guitar today we're trying to get more of that going on we're trying to make jazz a part of the language again and uh, there's a whole long story about that I won't go go into it too much so all right let's let's talk let's let's since we got you here and we're, yeah. and we're messing with this let's go so play if you were to play something like, let's say you're playing something in G, or what, what key do you guys do a lot of tunes in? Oh, well, some of John's stuff is in G. The central key for him is E. Almost e. Oh, everything yeah. is E. So, yeah. you, so you're playing something in E. 
And I know that he, he probably wants it pretty traditional. He does, and there's a, you know, we, we worked out most of the tunes that we did on this new record mm -hmm. um, are new songs that he hadn't recorded before, so we actually worked out parts for everything. Right. But my role is very much rhythmic uh, right. kind of stuff. So, it, uh, like, a lot of the intros are on the electric guitar, so um, stuff like... Um, so they're kind of syncopated weird yeah. lines but yeah. they continue through the whole song so, so when kinda... you were playing with with Sype, mm -hmm. you know the, the trio the, the jeff Sype trio yes what kind of stuff were you doing with him oh that was really eclectic so we do anything from d'angelo to weather report to right. jerry reed anything in between joshua redman covers uh, so if you were to do a weather report tune do you still remember any of those yeah ones? sure we played this uh What would the solo look like on that? Or well, you... that would be a th that progression is really fun to play over because it's like E major seven, then C major seven, right. then B major seven, then G major seven, right, and then E minor seven to so, E major seven. So when you're playing when you're playing over those changes, are, are you are you thinking of each chord? Or are you looking for for a scale that sort of fits a lot of them? Or uh, well, what, you, what, I, I do. I, I know I look, the answer to that, but I want people to hear your thoughts. J just for my personal background, because um, the teacher I had in high school was a really great theory technician, I guess, and right. he was really good at just getting right to the meat of it. Right. So, um, so I pretty much use like major scale if it's a major chord. Right. What, that, I know that that's home base, and then I'm playing yeah. diatonic within that chord. Yeah. So whatever the chord is, I'm going to try and match like that. Right. But, but you know, I try not not be, not be confined by a scale, but, uh, you mm -hmm. know, play outside of it too, but that's home base. So if you're going E major 7 to C major 7. Yeah, I'm thinking like over E major 7. Right. Uh, for C major 7, same thing. So on each, on each chord, you're, you're, you're thinking... The, the scale that's appropriate for that exactly chord. and it, i try not to think too hard about it and you know you get used to doing it and you, right. you know how it is as a player because yeah. you, you, it eventually becomes autopilot just like we don't think about the fact that we're using nouns verbs and things like that no, in our language I, yeah so but, well there are people that would say okay well the, the, here's a two five uh let's say it's well in e f sharp mm -hmm. b uh i'm just going to think e major scale which you can of course but you can also think of, well, what can I do with this F minor? What can I do with this exactly. B? Can I demolish this B? Absolutely. Know? And I think the song and the, the style and, and general style of what you're doing is the the arbiter that determines that kind of stuff. Right. So if it's a jazz tune, you know, I'm going to kind of work, work my way out a little bit and use, use b, sort of more bebop language. Yeah, well, that I, it, it, so for people to, to see you using that language, they need to jump on the Jeff Sipe stuff. Oh, right, yeah, that's, yeah, um, him and Jeff Coffin are the two bands that I played in where yeah, I got to do a lot you, more of that. Yeah, you do a lot yeah. more of that, and, and now you Oh, you're... and Keith Brown, I haven't mentioned him before. All right. <laughs> he is awesome. So his dad, Donald Brown, was one of our teachers in college, uh -huh. um, and he played with Art Blakey and the Jazz Messengers, and um, he produces Kenny Garrett albums and all this really cool stuff. And Very cool. He plays with the best of the best, so his sons, Kenneth and Keith, yeah. are both outrageously good, and um, there's a record that we did in Atlanta here with Keith, they had Terry Ungully on drums from Christian McBride's band. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Greg Tardy on saxophone. All these great players. Yeah. Um, and his compositions are just out outrageous. So, um, so check, yeah, check, that's the most kind of crazy jazz stuff I've gotten to do yet. So here's something, here's something really cool I want everybody to, to kind of get that, that, you know, you're playing, this gig is pretty much Americana. Yes, sir. Yeah, you know, pretty much Amer Americana, which is, which is, it stretched its boundaries out a lot. You know? Yes, and, and yes. Jerry, guys, like Jerry is like leading that right, charge. Right, because he's a big Weather Report fan. And yeah, all right. I was going to say, Jerry's uh -huh. leading that charge in terms of stretching out this genre for sure. Yes. So, you know, I've, I've heard people say, well, I don't, I, I don't want to learn jazz. It'll ruin my playing. Right. You know, and I think that's probably one of the most ignorant things I've ever, <laughs> I've yeah, ever heard. Yeah, it's, it's unfortunate, you know, um, and I think there's a, an idea about school yeah. being, um, you know, something that can confine your creative expression. Right. But to me, it's kind of it's kind of like a good writer, too. Um, like, someone who, who writes novels is going to have put some time in studying right. language. Yeah. You know? 
the English language and um, studying literature. Yeah. And whether you get into the theory or not, you know, some of my favorite players don't don't really know any theory, which right. is kind of crazy. Or they know it, but they, they don't reach for that. So, like Bela Fleck, for example, yeah. plays the most advanced classical, jazz, anything in between music. Right. But he's not a theory background player, but he hears all of that. Right. So he's dealing with the same information, it's just in a different, it's more of an oral context. You know, I hear that same story an awful lot with, with the guys that, that I that seem to be the creative geniuses, you know, that they're, they really don't know much theory, they just play it. Right. They hear it. Well, you know, they can play I, anything. I think that's the ultimate thing, right? Is what what are you hearing? It's and all um, about what you can hear. Dude, Hol Alan Holdsworth is a great example because he sidestepped our sort of Western notation convention yeah. and made his own. I don't know if you've ever seen his like notation system that he came up with, but it was triangles, circles, and all this weird stuff. I have his book. <laughs> okay, okay, it's crazy, right? But I, I own the book. <laughs> man, what I love about it is he's dealing with Lydian. He's dealing with Lydian dominant. The sure. same things. He's just got different names for him. So yeah. And, and the, the fun. So what's your? I, I would I would say this. Th I would ask this question, but I'm not going to ask the question. Uh, is that what's your favorite thing to do? Because I realize you just like it all. I, I do. Yeah. I, um, man, I'm so grateful for all the people I've been able to play with. Yeah. And, um, meeting a lot of my musical heroes, it's like a dream come true. Right. And, um, so I, I'm excited for the future, just to see what happens next. So my next thing, we're, we're this is show 46. So talk about this gig for a minute. Okay. We're, we're here at the city. We're here at the city winery in Atlanta, Georgia. This is the last night of the tour with Jerry Douglas. That's right. And John Hyatt. That's right. And there's were 35 dates. It was like 47 or something, and we had like to cancel two. 47 so dates. 45 with Four, the two yeah, cancellations. I mean, yeah. A lot of a lot of dates. Yeah. And, in about two and a half months we've done all that so we've been hitting the road hard so um, and, and you know i mean i i I've, I've not met jerry and i'm not expecting to really but um but jerry douglas and ryan carter are two of my all-time favorite musicians period on any instrument uh i just think i just the guy plays and i hear music you absolutely know? yep you know that's it I, I the guy plays i hear music and i just go damn <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. unreal. So, what's it like to be next? I mean, the guy's a freaking genius. Oh man, it's a it's a. Constant, so, how does that uh, feel? It's a constant inspiration every night. So, I have, to, I have to pinch myself and remind myself that it's real. It's gotta um, be. But it, it's really cool. And plus, uh, I'm kind of an outsider to a lot of the stuff that he's known for, but the acoustic music. Yeah, scene. Alison Krauss and all that. Exactly. Stuff. Yeah. So it gives me a sort of a side door into that yeah. world, and which I really appreciate. And then, sure. and then he's like I said, he's playing Weather Report tunes, and we do a. Uh, what, uh, what's that really beautiful ballad? Um, I'm, tr I'm having uh, we haven't played it in this on this tour, but uh, there's there's some beautiful covers that he does from that world. So it's just I, a cool thing. I'm, I'm really surprised. Uh, I mean, that amp sounds very tuby. It does, yeah. It's, 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 it's really come that, a long way. It's got that harsh, uh, that, that's right. th that little grid on top that yep, you know, the tubes are known for. So it, it sounds really, really great. Yeah, I A-B'd this with, because um, I have three reissues at home yeah. um, in various states of, you know, uh, upgrades and repairs and stuff. But this one sounds as good as all so of them. So you also, do you play acoustic on this gig? I do, just for a couple tunes, yeah. Couple of tunes. Yeah, let me grab it real quick. I'll yeah, bring that sure. over just to show you. Uh, so Paul Beard is the Luther. Let me grab that while you go. Oh, yeah, sure, yeah. All yours, sure. Check this out. We'll let it. We'll let it me out of it. Oh my God, it's heavy. <laughs> yeah, that one's ash. Holy it's crap! It's an ash body, so it's pretty heavy. But it plays light. Well, you know, I'm surprised at. Um... <laughs> The way your fingers fly on it, I I find this I find this to be pretty heavy, actually. Oh yeah. But you're used to. Um, it's a wide neck. That's that's the thing that gets that gets people about it. I think. Yeah. It's a pretty wide neck, but uh. We'll edit my playing out. Oh no. No. Uh, anyway. But yeah, it's a great track. Check this one out. So this is a. Uh, a Paul Beard. It, this model is called oh, wow. Sidecar. So, I'm, yeah, I'm and check it. out the action on this thing. He's kind of Boston for the spring Yeah, man.
Beautiful, man. Awesome, Bob. That's cool, man. I didn't know we were going to get to play this together. Thing's, I didn't know it either. This thing sounds great. Man, I love this guitar. Um, here, I'll trade you one more time. Yeah, 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 this yeah. Because yeah. you can really play like an electric player on it. Yeah, no, I... I... I was easy. I had an easier time on, on the acoustic than I did on the electric. Man, um, that, that's been kind of the joke with the um, guitar tech for John Hyatt is that this like plays like better than my. It's electric. like butter, man. Yeah, that thing's that really thing's awesome. Who is this guy? Uh, Paul Beard, and so he's Paul Beard. So he makes Jerry's Dobros for a long time. Well, he also made Mike Aldridge uh, his D Dobros, and now he's getting into round neck. So he's making this really so great. So is line. that is that a? Um, it almost looks like old school, like 1950s uh, Sears. Finish, you know yeah, I mean? he's he's using oh, so that this is the deco model, and so it's a yeah. throwback. You can see the um, headstock art is also like a yeah, no, I love it. Signage, so it sounds great, it feels great, it plays great. I mean, yeah, everything the guy about knows it, what he's doing, man. We just really, we really toured cool. his shop the other day and we had a blast, you know, man, different stuff. I love it. That's really cool. Awesome. So you're playing what kind of stuff would you be playing on that? Well, um, for some of Jerry's tunes, we have some really beautiful balance that we play where I just get to kind of finger pick through like. Kind of stuff like yeah. that and the melody over it will be like you know really gorgeous tunes that's one from yeah. strength and numbers um but we, we do some other stuff we do like gorgeous. while my guitar gently weaves we do a version oh, of that yeah. um, we do some of his bluegrass tunes too like uh okay yeah we have a blast playing that you gotta go uh no i just got the five minute warning that they're gonna open doors oh okay fine. all right so we'll, we'll be done with that Man, this has been a this has been a trip. So we, we got we have five minutes to, to, to wrap up. We're gonna do another video. We'll do a Zoom thing. That'd be we're great. Talk yeah, a little bit absolutely. More about, you know, as soon as the holidays are uh, over, I've got stuff. lots of time. But too, this so. is I, mean, I don't know how we're gonna. Do, we've never done one of these. We've never done one of these at Jazz Guitar Today. I've never done a live uh, interview, and maybe when I'm done with this one, I'll never do another. One. <laughs> but, but I'm loving it. No, this is really fun. Yeah, it's I'm fun. Having, I'm having, I enjoy this too. Yeah. Uh, I gotta edit out some of my playing, but um, no, leave it in this there. Is, man. This is this is this is really really fun. Man, you're such an inspiration to, I mean, the, the, hey, man, cool. Um, you're such an inspiration to, because you're a young guy, all right? And, you know, you, you got, you, you studied, you got the language, you got the jazz language, you got the country language, you can do the Jerry thing, you can do the acoustic thing. And, man, that's where it needs to go. I mean, people, you know, need to, uh, you know, the magazine, we call it a jazz guitar today, but people you always hear me say this, that we were trying to come up with another name, but we want to embrace jazz. Absolutely. As, as, right. As, but we want to bring that language into all the other music. Absolutely. And we want people to understand that if you learn a language, 
you can apply if you learn some new words you can apply them to your absolutely. your daily conversation absolutely yep. and that's we're just trying to get people to learn some new words man i really appreciated hearing what Matheny said about that too about the word jazz and how it kind of boxes things in when really the music source itself is so great so. i am the anti-boxing with the jazz word thing, right because exactly. i've had rick beato and i've had that conversation sure I enough i won't yeah. go too far with that but oh and one other thing i was um thinking about with this too is like uh, I heard a quote from Derek Trucks, who's one of my heroes too. Yeah, um, what a great player, lyrical player. Well, um, that's he's got the he's got the Jerry thing. When he plays, it's just music. Exactly, you just yeah. tune in on it it's, right it's away. Music. Yeah, his yeah. first note. So yeah, and he yeah. can make one note sound so great. But yeah. he, I heard him once say that um, the only limitation that people have is what they've listened to. Right. I mean, the biggest limitation that a lot of players have is is what they haven't heard. Right. And it, he he said it more articulately than that. But um, well, that's but pretty good though. That resonated with me a lot because really, the the bigger your record collection, the more stuff you're checking out, right. the more things you have to pull from. So I, yeah. I really think that's cool. Man, well, I'm Bob Baker. Hey, Mike Seal. Jazz Guitar Today, City Winery, Atlanta, Georgia, uh, with the Jerry Douglas uh, Band. Is that what they, how they bill it? Yep, they're billing it as John Hyatt with the Jerry Douglas Band. John, so. Hyatt, John Hyatt with the Jerry Douglas Band. So thank you all. And, uh, we're going to catch up with Mike on a Zoom thing, and we're going to get a little bit more into the technical end of the whole thing. This was just right. been a ball. So uh, this is great fun. Cool. Thank you, everybody. Bye-bye right. now. Bye. Bye.